Oh boy, oh boy, things are getting very, very interesting now, especially going into tomorrow where Jay Powell is about to talk. The spotlight, friends, is going to be on him. It's been on the 10-year. We're going to be hopping into today's daily stock market brief momentarily. Just a couple housekeeping things. One, there is spam accounts that keep popping up on my channel like crazy. I will never ask you know, you for Bitcoin payments or my give you a WhatsApp phone number. So if you see that, just report it as spam. It's not me doing it. It may look like me, but it is not me. Um, the second thing is we're going to have timestamps in the description below. My name is Michael Silva. If you are new here, this is the Daily Stock Market Brief. I do these shows Monday through Friday, five days a week. Sometimes I miss out, but you know, I come back and I come back with a vengeance. In today's video, we're going to be covering not only the price actions that's been taking place in stocks, the indices, we're going to be going over some stock market indicators. And yes, yes, a sell signal has been triggered. I don't know if it's going to have follow through, but we'll go through that here in a moment. And then we're going to go over commodities. We're going to go the dollar, bonds, and yields. Got a lot to talk about. Let's just get into it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. The first thing I just want to show off right here is the BKX. Every time we come into what we call here the red zone, I call it the red zone. It's just this area of this resistance, basically. Every time we come into this area, there is a lot of fear in the markets. I don't know why. Could be just, you know, a coincidence. But, you know, right here, this was during the 2008 financial crisis. We had a lot of crazy things going on and plowed to the downside right here in 2018. Well, we know what the Fed was trying to do with the QT, quantitative tightening. And, you know, back to the downside here on the banking index. The banking index is very important to the equity market. So when you see the banking index go down, um, it's likely to see equities go down with it. Um, you know, especially if there's a big divergence between the two. But then we started to recover here in 2019. We came back up into this area, bam, pandemic hit, right? And now with unlimited unlimited quantitative easing, we have the BKX flying through the roof. As yields go up, the banking sector, banking industry does better. As you can see here, 10-year yields have been flying. So has the BKX. Why? Why is that? Why is it that when 10-year yields and 30-year yields go higher, the yields go up. Why do banks do better? Well, they make more margin on the long-term loans, long-term debt. For example, if you were to you know, buy a house, right? I'm not, I'm not going to get too much into that. But yeah, we are in that area, that area of resistance. We're right around that 120 range, negative divergence there, negative divergence on the MACD. And now we're having all this fear in the market relative to you know yields starting to really increase. What is the Fed going to do about it? We're going to find out more tomorrow. There's a couple things that can take place and you know it's somewhat you know, black and white, right? So one, you know, he could do something around um, yield curve control, right? I don't think that that's going to take place, um, you know, necessarily. Or he could just say something like, you know, there's nothing wrong with anything going on right now and try to do his best he can to what's quote unquote jawboning the market just uses his, you know, words to potentially, you know, ease the market a little bit here to not worry. But as you can see, you know, yields have been flying up and the market has been, you know, the tech sector has been uh, doing poorly because of those yields flying up. We're going to go into the indices right now, starting with the Wilshire. The Wilshire is a broad market index. As you can see, just two big down days in a row, down 1.57%, but we're still positive on the year. This right here is somewhat of a sell signal. These moving average crossovers, they're short term, right? So we're below the 20, the, the 10, and the five, and they're all in reverse order. So it goes 20, 10, five. When there, it goes five, 10, 20, you can see, you know, there's some momentum to the upside. This could be a period of consolidation, okay? We don't know for, sh for sure yet, but as of right now, um, it doesn't look too healthy. We saw some decent candlestick patterns here that we called out, but we never got that follow through. We're seeing more momentum to the downside. S&P 500, we are now towards the bottom range of that channel again, still holding on the 50 period moving average. This is what I think is going to take place. If we can break above this red resistance right here, which is right at about 3,900, I think that that sets us up for a move to 4,000. But right now we are below the channel. Technically, I can move this down a little bit and we'd still be within it. We're still positive on the year, okay? So we have a little bit of bearish price action since, you know, February 16th range, right? When we hit the top of the channel, we started talking about that, right? Like you can go back and watch the movies. And that's why I also wasn't posting that many stock setups and bam to the downside. Now we're seeing some massive, massive swings going back and forth, which is a little bit of a cause for concern there. But still structurally speaking, we're above the 20, I'm sorry, the 20 is above the 50 period and above the 200 
Um, this could set up for a sharp decline depending on what takes place tomorrow. Uh, as I see it right now, though, still everything is structurally sound at this particular point other than like you know, the multiple gaps going up from a technical perspective, though, you know, everything is in bullish context. What do I mean by that? We have higher highs and we have higher lows still. Until we take out a swing low, then we could start seeing a change in shift. So, for example, we would have to take out 3,700 and create a new low there because that would mean, okay, we have a high, a higher high, and then we would have finally a lower low and then we would have to bounce up right and see a lower high and then we can see that trend really start shifting um, but until then we're still in overall bullish context you know despite what people might want to believe but that's what the chart says that doesn't mean that we can't correct down to the downside more um, by any means but just know from a technical perspective you know we're still in bullish context however there is a lot of fear in the market a lot of emotion because of these past you know, week of trading, right? These huge range candles create more drama. They create more emotion, gets a little, you know, it shakes people off of their positions. Um, so we got to just be mindful of all of that. And on the 30 minute time frame, the last past two days, we're still within a channel, right? I mean, look at, we're right here, um, about to fill a gap right around 381. You know, we were, we were there February 3rd. Uh, we're, we're exactly where we were a month ago. You know, wow, fun, fun stuff, right? And you can see just the massive swings back and forth clearly there is some weird stuff taking place in the markets. We do have a couple gaps to get filled still. Those don't look like um, you know anything new that this market hasn't been presenting us with. We've been seeing a lot of gaps. Let's look at the Dow Jones. Dow Jones also, you know, very similarly, we are just seeing these massive range candles, a little bit smaller ones these last couple of days, trading below the 20 period moving average, but you can see they're all still pointing straight up to the right, right, up to the right. We did have that bearish crossover, so that could be the start of a potential more move downside, but also keep in mind, we have higher lows, all right? So as many people wanna believe that this is the stock market crash, this is, this is that. If you can just remember, you know, a year ago, the crash started with a monster gap down and like continued. And then we saw a little bit of a ramp up and then more power to the downside. What we're seeing right now it's not nearly as impactful. It might seem like it because we haven't seen it for a while, but also if you just go back to October, right, we had corrections and then followed through with the move up and same with the top of September or was it August, somewhere around there, a very similar thing took place. Actually to the point, it's funny because we haven't even seen that big of a move down, but yet we're seeing more panic now than what we did in September and um, October pullback right there. So just keep that, keep that in mind. Like, right, like chip, put your emotions to the side, look at the chart, see what it says. Um, and I'll be going over some more stuff because there are some, there are some things that are standing out to be um, very dangerous here. So we'll go over that here momentarily. Um, here's the DIA. We, we've been trading within this channel. We had a bear bull trap. We had a bear trap, right? <laughs> The, you know, if you would have got in here, bam, right back down to the downside. If you would have got in here, bam, right back up to the upside. Now we're kind of forming a bull flag at the bottom range of it. And notice right here too, we have this big gap here, this big gap there. Maybe we come close this tomorrow if this bull flag wants to break down, which I can see taking place uh, quite simply just given the context here. The DIA wasn't doing all too bad, actually. It, was up in, it wasn't just till up until the close where we started seeing more pressure selling to the downside. We are in an uh, area of confluence, right? We have support, and then we have this bottom channel here. So typically what happens if we can't break it during the cash hours, we just see some sort of gap down. Um, you know, the same thing goes with resistance. Now, look at where we are, right? It's March 4th. March 3rd, sorry. And if you look back, that was where February 8th was, right where we opened up. So, you know, we're, we're, we haven't gone anywhere for a long period of time. We've been chopping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Is it breaking up? Oh, is it breaking down? Oh. So look at like, we haven't got any clear direction yet. And we won't until we start breaking through this 320 or breaking down from the 309 on this specific chart, right? On the daily time frame, we'd have to get below, you know, 29,750 right? So that's a big move from where we are, but that's what it would be required to see a change in um, the trend because we're putting in higher lows still, all right? So, you know, see it for what it is or we're having higher highs and higher lows still. Um, you know, these kind of things, topping processes take a long time, especially if this is the top. 
Um, here's the Russell 2000. We'll, we're getting to the Qs here momentarily, which is uh, the more important piece. But Qs right here, we're back below the 20 period. Also a pretty big down day, you know, down 1.8%. Wasn't horrible until really the close. We did close at the low, back below the 20, like I said. But we're still within this kind of channel, this range, right? So yeah, we're below the 20. We've been below the 20 a few times. We haven't been below the 50, um, you know, until October, since October. So it's been a while since we've been trading below that and we're not there yet. We have this as resistance, then it acts as support, support. Then we have the 50 period moving up to it too as well. So keep that in mind, right? Still bullish context, higher lows, higher highs. Here we are on the 30 minute time frame, descending, broadening wedge pattern. We have a couple gaps below us. Maybe we come down and target lower, lower area right here and then start moving up again. It's too hard to tell at this specific point in time. We really need to see how tomorrow plays out. Um, if this isn't difficult for you, um, it should be. And, it, and, and if you think that, you know, you've kind of mastered this and, you know, you're getting, building up confidence, don't let it be false confidence. I tell you one thing, because the market is, ex even for tac tactical traders, it's very, very, very crazy right now with how things have been going. So a lot of market uncertainty, but what you can, you know, you scope out, you got to look at the big picture, right? So the big picture is shown as bullish. If you scope out even more, you, you you start like thinking even more about like, well, why would it be so bullish when, you know, it's this massive bubble? So there's bearish things and bullish things within the context of these charts. And you got to think about that. You know, people always say to me, you know, you were bearish this day, you were bullish that day. You're bear look at, you can look at a very bullish chart and say that it's a bearish trade. For example, you know, when this ran up to this low upper range right here, you know, some might say, oh, that's bullish because it's been going up. Well, in the context of things, you still have lower highs. So it's actually a bearish trade running into resistance. If it broke out and got confirmation, then it would be a bullish trade. So yeah, you can have bearish trades in bullish context and you can have bullish trades in bearish context, but you got to overall look at the trend and the trend um, is something that you really need to pay attention to, which gives us context. Here's the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ got beat down the hardest, down 2.9%. The Qs, all right, we've been calling out this head and shoulders pattern now for quite some time. And um, the channel, I just deleted the channel for right now until potentially we come back into that range. I want to start marking out some areas that we might be able to buy into um, just in case if the Fed does step in, because if the Fed does step in anyway and tries to do um, something to do with, you know, uh, this, uh, uh, what did they do in 2011 or 2013? I'm already forgetting the name, but some sort of a yield curve controller try to, you know, tame that from continuing to ramp up higher and higher, this could make for good long positions on our tech stocks. So, and the tech stocks make up a big weight, right? The Fangman stock. So you're starting to see when tech goes down hard, um, the markets are going to follow in some cases. Now, Right now, we just broke through the neckline, that 38.2% retracement level. The retracement level is me um, measuring from here, uh, you know, November bottom to the uh, top right here, okay, the all-time high. Now, we did, you know, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. We broke down. Now, okay, if we hold down here a couple of days, that, to me, confirms a breakdown for this head and shoulder. So where can it potentially pull to? Well, a 50% retracement level will bring us right back to that September high area of resistance. That could make sense for a bounce opportunity, right? So if we pull down even more from where we are, 310 to 302, we could get there tomorrow. Or even bigger, the two big FIB levels that I like to look at is 38.2 and 61.8. So I would say anything within this range could offer up a very good opportunity to buy because I don't know if the Fed or let alone if the market is going to allow it to drop much further without seeing some sort of a bounce. So keep in mind, remember, we showed this chart on the thumbnail video that I said that was critical. Okay, We looked at big picture stuff about the, the market basically, you know, rolling over and mapping out some key levels. So go back and watch that movie if you haven't watched it. And it's going to map out key levels. Now, if we do start breaking down, keep in mind that it's very likely to see big swings to the upside, which we saw when I brought up the chart from 2000, the dot-com bubble when it burst. When bear markets, you know, or bubbles pop, you can see the market really take big hits to the downside, but you see massive swings to the upside. So you can make a lot of money on those moves because they are fast, 
they're aggressive, but you need to be very tactical when you approach it. So that's, I'm excited for it. I, like I said, I haven't been holding long positions really other than silver the last couple of days that got kind of hammered, but we'll get into commodities because holy moly, um, I do see some good setups right now, which I'm pretty pumped about. Not sure if they're going to be playing out right now this second, but I am pretty pumped about them. Now, um, the cues on the 30 minute time frame, right? Uh, this could be very well a bear trap. Okay, people might be shorting into this and you know they might make some great money for the time being, but it also could be a bear trap. So we gotta be mindful of that. Uh, positive divergence, falling wedge. Uh, we did break down through this level of support. So keep that in mind. If something takes place tomorrow where the market perceives it as uh, good news for tech, whereas maybe yields might come down, the 10 year might take a, a breath, this thing could be set to pop up high and fast very quickly. Um, not necessarily sure that that's going to happen, but it has the possibility to do so. I posted on Twitter today. If you don't follow me there, follow me. I looked at all the time frames. I looked at 15 minute. I looked at five minute. I looked at 30 minute. I looked at two hours. I looked at some big time frames, and they all had positive divergences. So really quick, we had a big sell off today, but the internals of the market. Okay, the price action, if you look at the chart, it looks very bearish, but the internals do not match today's down day. And that to me is concerning. It's telling me something's going on behind the scenes right now, like it's some sort of fake out. I can't, you know, guarantee that, but what I am saying is it's very, very difficult to trade these environments if these are fake outs, right? Um, I mean, by the internals not showing the weakness. The price action is showing the weakness, but the internals, the internals are not showing the weakness right now. Let's get into some indicators. First off, the sell signal. Guess what? We're at 0.8. We haven't fully crossed over it, but we are at 0.8. That represents a sell signal. So is there more downside to come? Well, this suggests that there possibly is more downside to come. So now be very careful. I like to see it cross above, but we're sitting at 0.8, which still technically represents that sell signal. So we'll see if it holds up there by any means. Um, typically when we cross above it, you can see if you look down, we see some selling pressure. You crossed above it, we saw some selling pressure. Now you can see it move up a little bit, you know, for a while or sideways for a while, but then we've been seeing some selling pressure. So keep in mind that the sell signal now has been triggered. Lumber to gold ratio is still risk on. All right, so we're still in a risk on environment, but keep in mind we are at a low point where we haven't seen since December. So it's been some months since we've been at this low point. When we get below zero, that is a risk off environment. Um, I will say the three week rate of change is at risk off and has been now from, you know, right here, mid-February. And you can see, if you look down, went risk off and we're seeing selling pressure take place. We're seeing an increase in volatility. So um, this one, uh, you trade more frequently. It's wrong more frequently, but it can be right early when it nails it. Here is the NIMO. This is a breath indicator, still negative breath, not overextended to the downside by any means, but we did get overextended right around here. I was thinking it might go further. And then we saw a little bit of a bump to the upside. Now we're still seeing it kind of troll around down um, in the negative breath territory. It looks very similar to 2020. Negative divergence, negative divergence. We had that, you know, build up. So first off, like we had the, you know, lower highs here and then the higher highs build on the price action, lower highs here, higher um, highs on the price action here. And now we're starting to see it break down a little bit. So it's very possible that we get the same play out. Obviously, it might not be to this extent because of what happened, right? The pandemic, but you never know. Here, I want to call out sentiment. Look at this an overextended reading on the AI, AAII bulls to bears surveys. When it gets overextended to the upside, you know, you got to be be mindful that sentiment is typically, you know, it's 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 just an overextended level. Um, same thing up here when you get the bulls up here in this range. So what we see here is a negative divergence, a negative divergence. We saw one here in February, right before the crash. And we saw here in 2018 as well. Um, so be mindful as well for that taking place. Very similar stuff. So we have the sell signal. We have lumber to gold ratio. We're saying risk off the three week at least. We have sentiment overextended right here on this uh, ratio. We have the VIX back above 25, showing some signs of strength. Now, I think that if we start getting above this 37.5 to 40 range, that will be a cause for concern. That can see a very dramatic pullback in the markets. So 
be be on the lookout for that. But until we actually see that, I think we're we're still building those higher lows. I think if we get a squeeze above uh, you know these levels, that would put us in that territory of putting in a lower uh, a lower low, which could definitely tra- change that trend uh, from what we've been seeing. So right here, we've been putting in higher highs. You can see. High, higher, high, higher, high, higher, high, higher, high, higher, high here. So that's been just trending up here too as well. So we might need to draw a line there to kind of watch out for that. You can see the RSI has been in this cupping pattern for quite some time and still continuing to hold there too as well. All right, um, now now I want to show the BPNDX chart. This to me so far looks pretty similar to what happened in September. So if you look over here, September, we had that big squeeze to the upside and it was a pretty dramatic fall to the downside. That's when people were going kind of, you know, haywire. That was some crazy price action right there too as well. And what I wanted to call out is this kind of chart, how it looked, right? So we had a low here, a lower low. We have a low here and we potentially might get a lower low, which would create, right, a positive divergence. Um, well, once we look at the RSI, I'll show you. And then right here on the RSI, you see this overextended territory when we pulled down, and then it came down a little bit lower, right? But we had internal strength coming in through the RSI. It was a positive divergence. And that right there set us up for one heck of a move to the upside, and then it corrected and then followed through back up again. Well, we might be some, seeing something very similar take place. Perhaps it's what we're going to be what I'm going to be looking for. So, for example, if we start getting pulled back further here, but then the RSI isn't being supported, there's a positive divergence there. That means we're going to have the positive divergence here, um, and you'll see it here on the price action. Um, it's already technically a positive divergence on the price action. It has a low here, a lower low, and then you have a low here and a higher low. So, if this gets down there too, as well, we could be setting ourselves up to really have to pay attention to what the market internals are telling us because this could be a very temporary thing before we start seeing it rip higher. Now, markets can also continue to break down from these levels, so we need to be mindful, mindful of that. But it does set up the potential for a good hedge long opportunity if we do get back into oversold territories. If you are um, looking to hedge along uh, the Qs or NASDAQ or whatever, or certain tech stocks. Now let's get into commodities. Commodities, I got some interesting stuff to show. First off, I want to show gold. Gold now has came down into this price range around 1700 We had a low today of 1699 So we just came into that buy zone. I put on another buy order. I ended up choosing um, miners. So I took a little bit riskier uh, move into the miners. Uh, keep in mind, by the way, when I say risky, I mean that they move much more frequently than the um, than gold and silver, right? So the miners, I, I went into junior miners. I built into more of a position there as we pull down here. Now, um, I'm not recommending it because there still is the potential for more downside. Uh, you got to also keep in mind, like, these are longer term holds for me, you know, and on top of all of that, the position that I'm in is relatively small comparatively to my overall portfolio. So, I can, you know, you just got to think of these things, you know, think think them through before just kind of taking an over leveraged position or anything like that. So um, that was my first uh, kind of target area. So it came down, like I said, got into it. Um, the price percent oscillator is still going down, but we are pulling into this area previously of resistance and then support. So this right here, and then we have the confluence of this uh, kind of consolidation period. We're a little bit oversold there. So this zone in here, if 1700 to 1720, this kind of zone, this pink box holds, this to me makes sense for a good setup to go potentially long. Um, but not just in gold, because gold is really just a say, like a hedge against you know protection. You know, long-term wealth building is kind of how I look at it, especially the physical kind. I went into miners, so miners is way more speculative, um, and I'm doing it for profits, and I'm typically a little bit more aggressive if we see big moves to the upside. Silver, still holding a trend to the upside so far, right? Came down, broke it a couple of times at the 50% retracement level. I still think it's still a, a good area even around this 25 to you know, around the 24 range. Um, so it's still trending up, higher lows. Uh, sorry, yeah, higher lows. Uh, still in place. It's kind of creating this cupping pattern. I think that silver is one of the better opportunities here. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, when I made my position today, it was more into uh, silver miners. So I bought um, that dip, you can call. GDX. So here is the GDX, which is uh, the mining um, ETF. And I wanted to call out here on a bigger time frame, so you can see, you know, we have a positive divergence on the MACD. It's been trending down, obviously. We've been seeing the 10-year yield really really rise up here. But what's interesting is the 10-year yield is coming into an area of resistance. 
hey, whatever you know the Powell does tomorrow or how the market perceives what Powell does tomorrow, potentially that might set up the opportunity for yields to start um, coming down. And if that does, that could be very good for gold because the fact is the 10 year when it's been rising since august when it bottomed this had been going down higher low sorry lower highs lower lows meanwhile the yield has been putting in higher highs and higher lows so that'll be interesting to watch but i do want to call out we had resistance here resistance resistance and then we finally broke through support and acted as support right here and now we're coming back into that zone clearly that's at a confluence with this and then on top of all of that we have the 50 percent retracement level that can act as an area of confluence as well so this right here at the bottom of the channel doesn't look the greatest but you could be positioning yourself for potentially a pretty solid especially if you're a long-term holder, a pretty solid position there in the miners. So I'm excited about this position. Um, I think it still has the potential to fall further. I would be, I would even be inclined to see it more around 61.8. Um, I do like that retracement level a little bit better than the 50%, but you know, just spitballing stuff here. Um, crude oil, WTIC, powerful move today, right? We came into that 50% retracement level still in this period of consolidation currently right now. Overall context, very bullish. This is really helping the energy sector. We've been talking about energy sector now for a while. Energy sector still has the possibility to move significantly higher and further, N not necessarily just higher, but from a relative performance, it looks like it will be outperforming the tech sector potentially for a very long time to come, given some long-term charts that I've been looking at. And we can share those on another video, but it just seems to me, you know, tech sector, when you look at relative strength, it's running into a double top, you know, a 20 year double top when, from the, I guess I'll just pull up the charts, um, on another video, but I can show you that it is it is looking like uh, uh, the rotation is going into more the energy would be the better play from a relative performance standpoint. Um, but you know we have to have a little bit more confirmation take place. Here's the CRB. This is widely tracked. We have been breaking up to the upside, and we got through this resistance, which now is acting as a little bit of support. We're very oversold here on the RSI on the weekly time frame. Perhaps we consolidate here before we move up higher. It's very hard to say, but right now it is acting as a level of support. Bitcoin didn't quite pull down to our area of support that I mapped out, but it was within, you know, 100, 100 or 200, 400 bucks, somewhere around there. And then bam, if you, you know, got in, that was a presented a good opportunity to buy that area. Now we have the MACD starting to curl back up. So if that crosses over, that's a bullish crossover. Potentially we take out this previous high at 57.5 and then shoot even higher than where we currently are. Overall bullish trend still. We will see what happens, um, you know, coming up. Dollar. Dollar today up, not by much, 0.15, but it was still up. Um, comparatively, you know, this was up and S&P 500 was down. I don't think that, and I've been saying this, I don't. I think we got to get above 92. Right now, as I see it, we've been literally going sideways for since December. Really? I mean, or even before, yeah, since December. You know, look right here and that's where we are right now. So the dollar has been going sideways. However, on a good note for the dollar, right, on the weekly time frame. It looks pretty strong, uh, right? A bullish um, potential breakout of the dollar falling wedge. Now we have a higher low, so low here, higher low here, but we still have lower highs. So we haven't changed that yet. And I think the low, the higher low that we really need to take out, higher high that we need to take out is gonna be right around 92. Uh, I think that that uh, would signify a potential stronger move to the upside. But the more we stay down here, the more time the 200 period moving average has to come down into this area, which can add more confluence of resistance. So we'll keep an eye on the dollar. Uh, if the dollar does want to get squeezed somehow, it could be very fast and very aggressive and just blow through all these levels. So you now we're just in interesting times overall. It's just, it's just crazy. 10-year uh, yield and 30-year yield up today. 30-year up 1.8%. Uh, 8.1%, 10 year, you can just look at this move, just bam, to the upside from, from 2021. Talk about a just gigantic move. The market's trying to do something right here. I, I tell you, I don't know, I don't know what, what it's going to do or what the Fed's going to do to resolve this. But, you know, with the amount of debt that we have in our system, you know, how high can these go until it really starts shaking the markets? And we're starting to see it now, right? The yields are taking off and we're starting to see the tech sector, which is a big weight start to really have some weakness and that could be a problem now if you watch my other videos we've been showing these steepening curves right the 10 minus 2 and when it gets past this 1.0 
It typically heads higher, but that's when we all of a sudden start to see the markets really start to shake up. And you can see, you know, we passed through that 1.0 here in February. Well, guess what? Look at the look at the tech sector. Look at the markets. We're starting to get shaken up a little bit. So, you know, I, I feel like the Fed's going to probably just, you know, wait for something to break, then to react. I feel like it's going to have all the necessary tools ready to go right when it takes place. So we got to be on the lookout for that here. You know, you got to watch and see what he says tomorrow. I'll, I'll comment on whatever he says tomorrow. But overall, it's important to look at the bond market because the bond market's going to take that data, um, you know, whether it be, you know, economic data or what the Powell, Powell says, um, the Fed chairman or any central bank says, and they, they price that into the markets. So you don't need to be some economic wizard, but you can look at key levels in the markets because they are pricing that in. Like I might see whatever Powell says is, you know, bearish or bullish or whatever the case is, but that doesn't mean that the market is going to perceive it. The market is made up of a lot of participants. So, you know, more people might consider it bullish than bearish where it's a more bullish sentiment for, you know, whatever we're talking about. I'm just giving examples. Okay, I'm getting a little off topic. Here is the TLH, the 10 to 20 year. Um, I, obviously, as this go down, you can see yields, they go up. They work inverse there. We are oversold here, and we have a nice big hammer candle. I think if we start getting back above 147.50, this resistance, and then it acts as support, now it's going to act as resistance. If we get above that, you know, that could set up a big run on the bonds, which means that the yields could come down, uh, you know, and take a little breather from where we currently are. And that could be very good for the tech sector. And that could be very good for commodities. So I'm thinking that if this does take place, you know, the, the mining positions that I'm in, in the next, I'm sinking like two to four weeks to potentially three months out. Um, some big changes and big shifts can take place in a short period of time. And I think we're at a crucial area right now. Um, so I don't put, mind putting some money on the line uh given that I am already more bullish in long term for uh, commodities. I feel most safe in commodities at this particular point in time. All right, everybody, that's all I got for you on today's market brief. Once again, to just really kind of recap the thoughts, we broke down from the head and shoulders pattern on the NASDAQ. That's what all eyes are on, as well as Jay Powell come tomorrow to see if he can fix it, right? 10-year yield is a big one. What he's going to talk about, or is he going to do anything different, or is he just going to try to ease the market with some of his job owning? We'll find out tomorrow. Other than that, we mapped out some key levels to look out for if the market continues to pull down. These rubber band type moves, these large overextensions can offer a big rallies. So if this isn't a true breakdown, and if it is a true breakdown, we can mark out key levels, which would make sense, and then potentially play a rally back up into you know certain key levels. So be on the lookout, be safe out there. It's been a wild ride, and I'm sure that this wildness is going to continue moving forward. So you just gotta be prepared for that. That's all I got for you on today's show. See you later.